Uh, where should I go? So yeah, if you want to try Cerebrus, which is super, super fast, connected with a voice API, try out the demo, and the code is all available in LifeKit's repo. Russ actually built it over a weekend. Uh, so if you want to try it, yeah, please try it. And this whole thing is powered by Llama 4, uh, which is an MOE model. Does anyone know what MOE stands for? What Mixture of experts, that's right. And what right with me right now is Daria, and as Cerebras, we call her the MOE queen because she's responsible for bringing up all MOE models on our custom hardware that makes it super, super fast. So Daria actually has an amazing presentation that's super quick about what MOE models are. So that's why I wanted to give you this presentation because the, the theory behind how these models work is the reason why we're able to run demos like this, where you can have conversations with the AI that's super fast, where you can interrupt it and ask where I should go for dinner because I'm really hungry. And I kind of don't want pizza, so I don't know where I should go. So I will ask AI one more time. But yeah, here's Daria. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Daria, and um, I'm a head research scientist at Cerebrus. Um, before that, just a little bit about me. I was a part of Google Assistant team working um, at Google in Zurich. Amazing office there. Um, in Cerebrus, I've been researching LLMs, and most recently I've been researching Mixture of Experts. So today, I wanted to give a talk about what Mixture of Experts is and why they are so much better than like a general monolithic transformer models. Um, so I picked an example, which is DeepSeq model. You guys probably heard about it. It's a Mixture of Experts model, and um, we're gonna like go through the details there. Um, for those who are not familiar, DeepSeq V3 is basically a bit transformer based architecture. It had a lot of different interesting features um, that contributed to the recipe, but one of the key features is that it's MOE uh, architecture. So essentially, um, it's 600 billion total parameters, but it only uses about 40 billion out of them. So it's very efficient to pre train it and also use it for real time um, AI applications. To kind of motivate why DeepSeq matters, here is the benchmarks um, for it. This is like the language tasks, but um, there are more tasks like for multi-model mod models um, that um, essentially deep, like MOE models are great at. So if you think about like open AI models or entropic models, those are also MOE models. And um, here, like you can see that it's DeepSeq models beating like um, other models available. They're a monolithic structure. Um, if you look at the particular uh, benchmark, which is GPQA Diamond, this one is very hard. It's essentially for PhD level questions, and um, you can see how good the DeepSeq model is at that. So they, for like the reference, 65% is the human level um, accuracy. So I also wanted to give a sort of like a trend of what's happening in the research community and how we actually developing these models and what comes next, essentially. So we started with the GPT-3 um, a while ago and essentially showed that as you scale the model size, you are gaining more and more capabilities. So the models learn more skill set as it gains like in parameters. Um, after that, we switched into the era where we tried to understand how do we clean the data sets, create bigger data sets, how do we scale up, what kind of corpuses we need to include into the data sets so our foundational models are the best and learn the best from it. So this is the example of the Lava 3, essentially. If you guys heard about that model, they spent a lot of time on curating the data, and um, it's still a monolithic model. Next, we understood that we need to basically make the models even bigger. So we need to increase the number of total parameters, but it becomes very expensive to train and also for inference. So the way to actually continue growing the models in size would be through the mixture of experts architecture, where you increase the total parameter count and like reach trillions of sizes, but activate only a portion of it so you can still train it like at the same speed as the dense models, or um, as the like other models smaller size. So DeepSeq V3 is one of the architectures that has MOE. And um, here I wanted to show you like what exactly MOE is in a nutshell. So if you guys are familiar with transformer architecture, it has different types of layers. So they're like embedding layers, attention layers, and there are feed forward layers. Those have different types of tasks. So essentially feed forward is like the, the layers that have the most complicated task. 
they kind of need to disentangle information that come from other layers. And it's a really tough job for, for this layer to actually like kind of be good at everything all at once. So what we did with mixture of experts, we split the feed forward layers into separate layers, and those are called experts here. So you can see E1, E2, E3, those are separate FFN or like feed forward layers. There is additional network that's added inside the making the transformer that's called the router. And the router essentially decides which expert to forward a particular topic to. So this allows us to kind of like divide and concur a very complex problem into smaller ones and allow like smaller experts to kind of deal with it. And once the talking goes through the like the other layers, once it's at the router, it doesn't have to be uh, routed to all experts. The path will be selected based on the router. And now I guess like this is the most interesting slide for the for for, for, the, for you guys. Like why MOE matters in terms of the real time inference. Um, so as we, first of all, like we want our models to be better, so we need to scale their quality, and the way to do it is to increase the model parameter size. As I said, you are gaining more skills for your model as you increase the model parameters. Um, at the same time, we cannot really train very large models efficiently, so in a way, we can, we can kind of think about like what's the most efficient way, what's the most computer efficient way to continue training models of that size. So with MOE, essentially, compared to dense models, you activate only a portion of the network and you trade it by saving flops. So compared to like this, the dense models, you can be 40% uh, more compute efficient. So you reduce your computer flops during the training to obtain the same accuracy. Um, at the same time, because you inference, uh, at the time of the inference, you activate only a portion of the network, you don't really have to activate the full network, and you save saving flops there as well, and hence you have lower latency. Um, there are some challenges, like people who probably like deploy MOE models or um, interested in working on them, um, kind of raised these questions before, and it, it's, it's interesting. Um, if, you, if you increase the model size, um, it's kind of hard to store all the parameters um, it becomes very big, so think about like trillions of parameter size. How do we actually uh, like store them efficiently? Um, there are methods to to kind of help MOE models become more efficient, even in terms of the total parameter count. So once you train the MOE models, a lot of experts in like particular layers become very similar to each other. So there are techniques like expert merging or distillations that allows you to kind of shrink the model in size and total parameter count, but retain the same like basically accuracy. Um, obviously, other methods that specific, specifically in deep seek were used, like quantization, essentially you can run at lower precision and, and be um, like, and, and don't store the, the, full, the full precision weights. Um, yeah, so this is kind of it. Um, I uh, thank you everyone for listening to my talk. Um, it, I'm still training with from expert models, so if you guys have any questions about that or are interested to know more about it, the times when I'm not debugging the training dynamics of my runs, I post about it on Twitter. Um, so I like interpretability work, uh, scaling laws, and, and stuff like that. So not just mixture of experts. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Um, I will ask that uh, Faraz and uh, Nishal just meet me over there in the back corner. But until then, I would like to introduce Amy up onto stage. Amy.